Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer. In this video, I'm going to be creating a mosaic art piece. Now this is actually my first try. I've seen others in the maker community do this. I've always admired them. I didn't want to go out and spend a lot of money on this because it's just for demonstration purposes. I'm not making this for a customer, but I did have a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood on hand. This is roughly 20 by 24. Now I did watch a couple other videos showing the technique and there were a couple things that I'm going to do in my video that I don't know if others are doing that I thought would be easier in keeping all of these pieces straight. So I went ahead and took a T-square and I found center and um, the couple videos that I did watch said how critical laying these first ones down are. So it's very important to measure equally. I mean, I guess if you mess up, you could also compensate for that when you go to cut off all of the pieces at the end. Um, but I don't want to make things hard for myself. I went into my shed to see what I had that was the same thickness and I had pine. It wasn't anything expensive. It just was like things you would use as shims or like trim behind pieces. So anyway, I cut them into about an inch and a quarter width. And now I've gone ahead and I cut a 45. Um, so that's tip number one is to start with boards that are all the same width and thickness. Just gonna lay everything on my board, just dry fitted, but I'm going to account for if that's in the center, then I'm gonna actually overcut these. So I'm going to, it's gonna come off the edge and I'm gonna draw, cause it gets really confusing when you're working with this. Um, being that I want like the rough side up, rather than the more smooth side. I'm going to have to alternate um, like the piece that's gonna go here when I go to cut, rather than moving my miter saw back and forth between 45s, it's easier just to flip the next cut that's going to be this piece and cut it from the back side so that when you flip it over, it's going in the direction. So anyway, I uh, hope that makes sense. But so I'm gonna line that up here and I'm gonna cut my next piece like this. And I'm just gonna take a bunch of these trim pieces over and cut them. Um, preferably I'm going to cut these long, then figure out my design and then take these pieces and cut them again where I'd like to. But that's what I'm going to do first is just find pieces that are going to fit on here. I think this is important to note. I had scrap wood that was very thin. I'm going to be attaching this with glue and brad nails. I didn't want to pick anything to make my mosaic that was so thin that once I shot a brad nail through it, it was going to split. Another thing that's really good to keep in mind is how many cuts you're gonna be making from those original pieces. I left myself some extra wiggle room because I know a lot of them are gonna have at least one cut, possibly two made from that. So you do wanna allow for the material that you're gonna lose when you make those cuts. Here's one of those cases I'll show you real close where I know I want my next cut to be that way. Um, but if I place it here, it's actually, so I need to make this cut rather than to keep rotating my saw back and forth between 45s. I know I want at least this distance. So I'm going to take the board. I'm going to flip it over on the other side and make my cut. See, so I end up with a piece like that. Also, in some cases, I'm left with these tiny little triangles, and I'm going to hang on to those because I think that the very last piece I'm going to use on all of the four sides is going to probably end up being a triangle. So um, I might end up deliberately cutting some like this. This happened to be like a fluke cutoff piece, uh, but I might need that, so I'm going to set that aside. Another really important safety thing to note is if you are cutting a tiny little piece, you do run the risk of having that get caught up in the blade and like flying off into oblivion. So it might be a good idea to take a longer sacrificial piece and lay it on top of the board that you're gonna cut. That way it is nice and secure between these two pieces and you'll be safer with your cut. I'm finally at the point where my entire area is covered and I can see how at this point things could get very confusing quickly. So what makes sense to me, and I don't know if everybody else does this, what I'm going to do at this point is assign each piece a number. For instance, this is going to be number one. So I'm going to write number one, and then I'm also going to draw like a line underneath it. Um, so I know which way is facing up later on. So I'm going to mark that number one, but I am also going to draw a line on my plywood and I'm going to write number one there. 
So what I would suggest is, um, and I think what I'm gonna do is work my way down. Now I know that later on, my next step is going to be cutting some of these in half to create a border where the colors change. So in that case, for those pieces, I'll label them like 1A and 1B, C, and so on. So that's what I think makes sense to me. I'm gonna go ahead and lift each piece up, draw a little line. I'm gonna write number two, and then on the back of that, number two with a line. And I'm just gonna carry on. That seems to make sense to me um, because this, like I said, could get very, very confusing. It's basically a giant puzzle and I'm not the greatest with puzzles, so I want to take the aggravation out of it. So that's three, four, Okay, so this is how this wound up. So this was piece number 13. So I'm gonna continue doing this and going into the lower left quadrant. And I'm gonna make this my number 14, 15, 16, and so on. And then I'll go up to this corner and repeat and just kind of go through the same process. I think that will help me keep myself straight and not get goofed up later on. They are all labeled thus far. There are 13 slats in each quadrant. Um, so I ended up with 52 overall. So I'm glad I labeled that. You don't have to worry about your lines or everything being perfect. I just wanna know a general area and where these pieces are gonna go afterwards. So at this point, I think what I'm going to do is uh, kind of straighten them out a little bit and then figure out which ones I wanna keep solid long pieces. I know that I pictured like having the ones that intersect in the very middle um, be full pieces and black, but then maybe what I'll do is make a couple cuts along the way. This is my first time. I don't wanna make it too overly crazy um, the first time. I just want it to look nice. So I think um, I'm gonna do something that I don't know that I've seen on the other videos either. This is a technique I just came up with being a newbie. It's very possible everyone does this and I'm just unaware of it. I think I'm gonna take my paint and mark them on here before I start taking them off to paint individually. Um, that seems to kind of make sense to me. Um, just again, these are new eyes looking at a project and just the past things I've worked with and my experience this far um, helping me figure this out. So I do know that these ones that come together, I definitely want full pieces and I want them black. So I'm just gonna put just a touch of black paint to kind of keep the space and visually I can see um, my pattern unfold. So I'll go back later and paint them entirely, but I just wanna find the ones that come together. I want those, or these four. Okay, so I'll go back later and paint the entire piece, but I do know I'd like a band of black um, showing right in the middle. And I think I wanna skip a couple rows and then do another full band of black, maybe there would look nice. So I'm gonna go one, two, three rows, and I'm gonna make these entirely black. Skip one, two, three, so these are entirely black. Now how about going this way? Um, I'm gonna be laying out a pattern with the remaining pieces that are left, and I think I want them to be about six inches so I'm gonna go ahead, I set up a stop block on this side so I can hold with my left. Um, I don't wanna get my hand too close to the blade. Um, if there are cuts that are gonna be like that, then I'll make sure I use um, clamps or another method to make sure that that's secure. So that is the next step. I'm just gonna go ahead and make those cuts. Okay, so I wanna make sure I label this carefully. 45A. and then 45B. And I'm gonna place it back and go on to the next one. I'm just gonna continue cutting my way around. It's helping for me to actually draw on the piece I'm cutting because 
I want this to be like op mirror opposites of each other. So it is complicated, but I'm just taking my time. Um, in some cases, like taking the opposite piece, picking it up and turning it over and tracing it, that seems to be helping. Um, but I'm thinking for these dinky, tiny little pieces out here, I think this last part is gonna be white all around the perimeter. I don't wanna be working with tiny little fragments. Um, you do enter into the danger zone there when you do stuff like that. So this is my first piece. Like I said, I'm just making it. Um, it's good to learn a new skill and also it's gonna be in a Facebook ad. So I hope everybody watches it. If you're makers, here's my plug in the middle of this. Um, the reason I'm demonstrating this is to show how much better these boxes are for makers than um, the competition, which I will not name. Um, so anyway, that's the whole point of this project, but I'm really enjoying it and I probably will hang this in my home when I'm done or give it as a gift. My pieces are all cut. Definitely, I would recommend having a stop block. Otherwise, you'll drive yourself insane. So I'm gonna go through now and mark which pieces that I want white, uh, just with a little dab of white paint. And then I'll know that the remainder are what I'm gonna stain. Next, after I do that, I'll pick the white off, put it on a piece of cardboard, sort of in the order that they're gonna go. There's no sense to make this even more complicated. Um, and then I'll take the black, separate them, paint them, and then the same with the stain. Then the next thing is to glue them and use a brad nailer. And then this is pretty much going down the home stretch. White, 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 white. I have an idea of where all the white ones are gonna go. So I'm just gonna kind of take these off and lay them on a scrap. Okay, so here's what my board looks like. Those are gonna be the stained brown pieces. Those are all of my white pieces. And over here are my black pieces. Before you paint or stain, there are a couple of these that have like little straggly edges that I'm gonna sand like this. I'm now at the point where I can start gluing and brad nailing everything on. Make sure you use a fastener that is long enough to go through your piece of wood and deep enough into this without poking through the back. Anyway, I have got a little paintbrush um, that I'm just gonna start doing. I'm gonna start with piece, uh, what was it? Piece seven and piece 33, which are over here. So that should go like that. Is a little nerve wracking. 46. I'm really glad that I labeled these, otherwise, it would be a freaking nightmare. Okay, so I'm going to use this as a guide for getting my angle down here. And again, I trust this a lot better than I do my haphazard lines because I knew when I drew them that they were not perfect. So, all right, this looks pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna continue then with the next pieces, which are gonna be my stained ones. So I'm looking for 34 and 45. There's 47 A and B. Setting it up is absolutely crucial because if you're off at the top, by the time you get to the bottom, you're going to be way off. So um, definitely use a straight edge and a square when you can. 
I'm gonna go ahead and get this next piece. These pieces set um, and clamping is also a good idea. Put a good amount of glue on the board. And then I'm taking my brush and brushing and then it seems like it goes together pretty well if you take these pieces and kind of push them into place at the same time. And then put your brad nail. There are a couple areas that have gaps that I will fill with um, probably sawdust and glue um, and maybe sand that down a little bit because even though I use the same board, somehow that piece just seems to be a little bit higher. I did goof on this piece. I don't know if I painted the wrong piece and stained the wrong piece, um, but I did put a little piece of tape there so that I can go back and fix that. Otherwise, it's going together well. The name of the game is to take your time. And um, I'm sure with each one, it gets a little bit easier. I'm now at the point where this is dried and I can cut off those extra pieces. This is kind of a make or break moment. Um, I've seen everybody else do them. They do them from the front um, and put tape on them. I was leery that I would actually be cutting into this back piece. So I think the first pass at least maybe I'll do all of them if it works I'm going to actually set up this um, yardstick as like a track saw and take my circular saw I went ahead and did do the tape I've made sure that I have an allowance over top of the table so I'm not actually cutting into the table I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to judge where I needed to be accurately and I didn't want to cut into this backboard so without further ado I'm just going to give it a try and hope I don't ruin it. Um, if it works out okay, then I might implement this same thing on the other three sides. So here goes. That actually didn't do a bad job. That actually didn't do a bad job. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over. This worked for me. I think taping it helped, but you know, that blade is not even new on my circular saw. And as you can see, it really didn't leave much damage. Um, the touch up work necessary on these is really very minimal. So I'm gonna continue using that method and then I'll come back on and build a frame. That one corner I got a little off track. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See, I started to cut into it and then I realized I was doing that, backed off, readjusted. And, but otherwise, it's a very nice clean cut around the sides. And it had very minimal marring to the front. Overall, I think the pattern looks like it's nice and even. Um, so I'm gonna clean my table up, clean up my workspace a little bit and then Probably, probably I'll put the frame on and then that way I can patch the holes and all of that um, last. I am gonna, just gonna use the scrap pieces I have. I think these boards hopefully are long enough to miter them. If not, I'll just make like a simple box frame. Uh, but here's the problem, and I don't know if this is evident on camera, but I did go off a little tiny bit on the front, but if I go to frame this and put a straight edge against it, you're gonna see this tiny little gap. So I think the best way to camouflage that is to build like a frame around it. And then I cut these tiny little strips, which I'll put on the inside. Um, but I think that it'll end up looking nice. It'll cover that mistake. It'll cover the mistake where I also, which corner was it? Where I started hitting into it and then corrected myself. Maybe it was that side. It must've been that side. I have my pieces cut, they're um, mitered at the end, and I did cut little strips, and I made them in such a way that they're like recessed. There's a little bit of a reveal right here. 
Maybe I'll stain them and then paint these inside rails white. I'm not quite sure, but so far I've used a lot of different tools on this one project. I've used a planer, a miter saw, a circular saw, a table saw, a sander. Um, I feel like I've done everything except use my chainsaw. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna continue. Oh, I had my um, Brad nailer. Um, but it's nice to have that stuff. And that way, when you run into a situation, you can take care of it the best way. So I'm coming down the home stretch. Um, other than I think the last thing will be finishing touches with um, filling these nail holes and then touching up the paint and stain. Here is the finished product. I actually am glad I made that mistake with cutting the backboards off because I really like that little inset trim there. This is quite heavy. If I were to sell this, I would guess I would at least price it at 150 and higher just because of the time it took, the skill level involved, the materials I used were higher quality. Um, so if you're going to make these to sell, I would think that overall it probably took between six and eight hours to build, probably a little longer because it was my first time and I was also filming. The only thing I think I would do differently is the way I filled these holes where the brad nails went in. I think rather than taking sawdust and glue, I would probably use like one of these putty stick crayon things. Um, I'm gonna have to go out and buy some that are like white and black and all that because I can see myself doing future mosaics. So I hope that video was helpful. I hope it inspires you to create something of your own. If you have any questions that I didn't cover in the video, please leave them for me in the comments. Please like and subscribe. I'm on TikTok and on Instagram. I post there daily. I thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care.